Hi, today we're going to talk about uh, Pearson correlation, R squared, and uh, comparing one set of numbers to another, whether they be store sales of one store to another, or uh, blood glucose and age. Um, but basically, to start with, you can go to Google and do scatter plots correlation. You see a series of graphics that show up. I'm going to use this one as an example. A correlation of one means that uh, variable number one is perfectly correlated to variable number two. They fall along a straight 45 degree line, or, or it doesn't have to be 45 degree line, it can be just a straight line. This is a scatter plot with zero correlation. This is a negative correlation, perfect correlation. And a lot of data falls into the range of somewhere in between these two, where you have a general uh, relationship between them, but there is some variability from uh, one variable to another. And so we use correlation statistics to uh, help us understand how the two things are that we're looking at are, are uh, related to one another. So to start with, what I'm going to do is run through some simple example, a simple example, and then I'm going to work towards more complexity, and we're going to build towards how does Tableau handle correlation and what uh, tools does it give us to work with. So to begin with, um, I'm going to start with a, a small example of uh, a data set of blood glucose versus age. And here, shown in Excel, is a six data point um, example data set where the age ranges from the patient being 21 up to 59 years old. The Pearson R term, which is just calculated as the as a Pearson calculation here from B2 to B7, C2 to C7 is 0.529, the R squared. And R squared is what we generally look at when we're plotting uh, two variables across uh, side by side. The R squared on this is 0.28. So if we go into Tableau to see what that looks like, the um, have to put a pause on and grab that file. So here's the data file in Tableau where we're plotting glucose on the vertical axis versus age on the horizontal axis. This is the trend line calculated for the uh, six data points, of course, I showed you in Excel the calculated value of R squared of 0.28. And here is the trend line model showing 0.28. Um, this is a paste of the, the trend line you can get by describing the trend line model here. And here again is 0.28 for the R squared. Now, this is the individual trend line information that you get shown for the trend line shown in red, but notice the that the R squared comes in the trend line model section up here. You don't get it on the individual trend line here. And this comes into play later on where uh, we're going to build in complexity of what we want to do in Tableau. So anyway, uh, we've got a good match. Tableau gives us what we're looking for, a perfect example of, um, of a correlation study. Now let's build towards a little bit more complexity. Let's go into another example where um, I'm go I want to look at uh, for a, s a particular time period, say January 2011 versus January 2012, for a series of stores. Their sales in January 2011 versus their sales in January 2012. I want to see how correlated are they a across one year, how much action has happened for this particular store. So if I take this time period and I put it in Tableau, I take this data set here, I can send it into Tableau. This shows me the difference in sales. And I come down to the bottom. So with 300 data points, what happens is if I isolate that data set, I get um, in Tableau for January 11, 12 only, a, an R squared value of 0.456. I'm going to show you this in a minute in Tableau. Calculated Pearson here using the actual formulation I, I've, I've gone through and calculated Pearson correlation is 0.456, and those are in perfect agreement. So let's switch over to Tableau and have a look at that. So for um, the time period of January 11 and 12, this is the scatter point data. You notice uh, I told you I had 300 data points if we d describe this trend model. 
<clears throat> what we notice is that degrees of freedom is 298. That's, that's correct. Notice that the R squared value here is 0 0.832. The individual trend model, although it does show the, the trend line correctly, we don't get an R squared value for that. This is for the entire data set, which happens to have, uh, going back to the data itself, we have time periods of January 11 and 12, February 11 and 12, March 11 and 12, and so on. And so we're, we have an ensemble statistical, um, oh, got to find the right Tableau file, here we go. For all these various time periods, we have over 41,000 comparisons of store sales. So the ensemble R squared for all of those is 0.832. I can't tell what the R squared is for just this time period of January 11 and 12. And that's unfortunate because I would like to be able to plot right here R squared equals 0.4, whatever it is, 0.4. Um, let's see, which one was it here? 0.45, what was it? 0.456. I'd like Tableau to be able to do that for me but it can't. Uh, so what I would like to see is Tableau develop um, the ability to have R squared being representative of the actual data set that you're looking at or sub data set because as I I would like to iterate through these here's February, here's March, here's April, here's May I'd like to be able to plot the R squared dynamically for all of these particular data sets. That's a current limitation in Tableau I mean, it may be possible to do, um, but even with, with, in this particular example, I am actually calculating the correlation number here through a series of calculated fields. Um, I still can't dynamically plot the the correlation number on these graphics as I as I want to. I'd like to be able, to, and you can imagine, I've only got uh, maybe. 16 time periods here, but in other examples, I might have a lot more. So let's take a look at what you know. What might that look like? Well, if let's just say that I wanted to do a correlation of even more information than I've than I'm showing you so far. So let's say that I have a list of stores. Um, there's 217 stores and I have their sales data by time coming across. Well, this, this, in this example, I want to correlate the sales in each store to each store, and I'll show you what that means in a minute. So if I reformulate the data to have the date coming down across the rows and the stores coming across the columns, I can take this and build a Pearson matrix that looks like this. So um, each store is coming across or coming down column A across the rows and I've also put the stores coming across um, row number one across all the columns required in column uh, in row one. So Great Northern Mall compared to Great Northern Mall has a correlation of one. So along the diagonal every store is correlated to itself perfectly. And then I have a, per a Pearson formula that's comparing store one to store two. So in this particular case it's comparing the Pearson data from column C to the Pearson data column B. If I go back to that to that you can see it's um, the Great Northern Mall versus Lafayette Road store. So that's how these correlation calculations um, are completed. So this is a big matrix. This is the upper part of the matrix. I can transpose the matrix to go to the lower part and then I can get the complete Pearson matrix and so for the Great Northern Mall I can see that it's perfectly correlated to itself to the Lafayette Mall it's got a correlation of 0.72 to this one 0.793 so the complete correlation record for each store is shown uh, line by line. Well this doesn't go into Tableau perfectly either so what I'm going to do uh, if I would do a um, Tableau transform and reshape the data I can use the, the reshape tool if I click this this is going to reshape the data and it's going to come out into a table like this which gives me store 1 store 2 
and the Pearson correlation for those. So now this can go into Tableau and as I switch back into Tableau linking to that data set there's various things we can do. We can recreate uh, here's the Pearson matrix as I had it in Excel with the diagonals showing at one uh, along the the diagonal showing 1.0. I can rank the stores based on their um, their average correlation so this is reverse sorted so this Cahaba village is the weakest correlated uh, store overall to the other stores and so you can see that as you scan down there's a lot of stores that are fairly highly correlated to all the other stores you can see that basically the majority of these stores are correlated at least at a 0.7 but as you get down here in the lower end, you've got this grouping of stores that are not really correlated to as well as to the sales and the other ones. And so you might want to look at these to see, you know, what's going on with those stores. Why are they behaving differently? You can create a heat map of this big matrix. Of course, you can see the diagonal coming down here. You can do a bubble plot for um, if you wanted to see for any individual store. We could put the stores on the page shelf and we can animate through those. And you can see how the average correlation is changing uh, from each store correlated to all the other stores. You could plot, you could create plots of these. Of course, these uh, these are you know fairly big bubble plots. There's 217 lines in each one, but you can see how the average is jumping around. So you could uh, create all those 200 PDF files if you wanted to and examine them to see you know why are some stores really have very low correlation to other stores that may help you find out some information you can do histograms of um, the complete picture of the correlations and you can see you know really highly correlated stores are out here the poorly correlated stores are down here and average being between 0.75 and 0.8 or the, the, the highest uh, occurrence of correlations being between 0.75 and 0.8. So there's a variety of things that you could do in Tableau, but you know, generally we would like to see, have the ability going back to our previous example of, of plotting an R squared on this line automatically. And uh, you know, th that, would, that would help us dramatically. So in this case, if I, uh, although the trend line looks correct, if I describe the trend model, you know, again, I'm getting an R squared of 0.832, the, the ensemble um, R squared for all of the data sets, and, and that's not what I want. So anyway, that's um, one of the limitations of Tableau, and I'd like to see that improved in the future because that will help um, the utility of Tableau and being able to do these large, uh, producing a large number of scatter plots. And uh, for now, that's it. Thanks for listening.